Hi, hello. Good evening, good evening, one and all. Welcome, welcome to the session. Can anybody confirm about audio and video? Is audio video both are clear? If you have any sound, please do let me know. Okay, so please do confirm about audio and video. Uh, let me check from my end also. Hi Ashok, good evening. All clear? Chalo, we'll move on to the session without wasting much time. Right, so in the last uh, session, uh, we had a discussion on, uh, uh, you know, the importance or the reasons behind the nodal analysis or mesh analysis. In the last session, we had a discussion on reasons behind nodal analysis, mesh analysis. You can go and watch to that. Uh, you can watch that session. It's a small session, hardly it's not 20 minutes also. So I have given some step-by-step -step questions like KCL question I have taken, KVL question I have taken, and then I have taken the circuit reduction technique question, and then I moved on to nodal analysis question. Okay, so that in step by step, I try to explain the reasons behind the uh, nodal analysis or mesh analysis. Okay, so in this session, we will try to take up some questions on uh, important models of nodal analysis. So here, I just wanted to tell you at this point itself, you see last 20 years papers. Let's see last 20 years papers. If you see or if you go through that 20 years paper, <clears throat> you'll understand one thing. The network consisting of resistors and independent sources. This is one model. Okay. And the second model is going to be networks consisting of resistors and uh, uh, independent plus dependent sources. Independent plus dependent sources. And the third model is resistor uh, with with super node Res resistor network consisting of resistors with super node okay in this one also here also i have got two models like in independent sources in some questions they will be having only current sources only current sources or only voltage sources so in a network only resistors and voltage sources might be there or otherwise resistors only current sources might be there it can be voltage sources and voltage and current sources okay so these are the two three models these are the two three models you'll be having okay sorry this is uh, not independent sources this is dependent sources actually i should write dependent sources dependent sources okay so this is one model, dependent source and resistors one model and with super node one model. So hardly three, four models are there. So let me show you, I have got around four questions. So let us discuss those questions. Okay. <clears throat> if you have any problem in solving um, dependent source problems, so if you have any kind of problems or if you did not understand any stuff, please ask me in this session. We'll try to clear out that, uh, that part. Okay. Are you ready? So let's move on to the session quickly. So before moving on to the session, uh, if you are very much new to the platform, myself Naveen Gwalapalli, I have 11 plus years of experience in teaching. Most of the times I'll be teaching circuits, machines, measurements and power system. And uh, there is a small announcement from the Baidu's exam prep platform. Uh, there is a scholarship test on 9th July at 9 a.m. So uh, if you attempt this one scholarship test, you will get a discount or concession up to 90% on the actual fees of gate. Okay. And there is one more uh, thing that is on 11th July, there is a workshop which is going to, uh, which will be on how to secure the uh, rank in 
in gate under AIR 100 that will be taken by Joseph sir at 7.30 p.m. on 11th July. So, so if your friends or colleagues are preparing for gate examination, please try to uh, share with them so that they will also get benefited. Right. So let's quickly move on to the session. So this is the question I have got. So try to solve the question along with me. Try to solve the question along with me. So the question is here, determine the currents flowing through R1, R2 and R3 as shown in the figures below. I have got R1 here, R2, uh, R2 here and R3 here. So he is asking the currents flowing through those resistors. Okay. He did not mention R4. That's fine. No issues. Okay. Right. So if you want to adopt nodal analysis, if you want to adopt nodal analysis, first you need to do, first you need to identify the principal nodes. First you need to identify the principal nodes. Principal nodes means at least three elements must be connected at a point, common point. Okay. You check this one here, 5 amperes is connected, 1 ohm resistor is connected and 2 ohm resistor is connected. This is also, this point and this point both are same because there is no element between these two. So 5 amperes uh, and resistor R1, R4 and R2. So four elements are connected. This is one principal node. Similarly, this is also one principal node because this point and this point both are same. And here 1 ohm, 6, 6 amperes uh, current source and 4 ohm resistor, R2, 10 ohm resistor are connected. Similarly, at this point, this is the also uh, one more principal node. So there are three principal nodes in the given network. Right. And out of the three principal nodes, you take any one principal node as a reference or datum node or ground node. So generally, we will take up this as a ground node. Okay. Right. After identifying the principal nodes, you just assign some voltages like V1, V2 and V3. Okay. That node voltages. We have taken the ground node as, we have taken the bottom node as ground node. So the ground potential is zero. Right. So, it will be V3 is 0. <coughs> V3 is 0. Now, you need to solve for V1 and V2. Right. If you want to, you need to solve for V1 and V2. If you are able to solve this V1 and V2 values, then you can easily calculate the currents flowing through R1, R2 and R3. Because current flowing through R1 is simply what? Potential difference divided by resistance. Current flowing through R3 is what? Potential difference divided by resistance. That is V2 minus V3 divided by resistance. R3 value. That's it. Okay. So, uh, then let us write the current equations or nodal equations uh, at each and every node. Okay. Sure. So, please uh, do from your side also and post your answers if you get it. Right. I am writing nodal equation. I am writing nodal equation at V node. KCL at V1 node. Nodal analysis is nothing but what? It is a combination of KCL plus Ohm's law. That's it. Write KCL first followed by Ohm's law and convert the KCL into Ohm's law. Okay. Now, whenever you are, whenever you want to write KCL at any particular node, you should assume that particular node voltage as, as greater than any other voltages in the network. V1 should be greater than this R1 volt, R1 uh, resistance voltage or R2 resistance voltage, every branch voltage, V1 should be greater than every other branch voltage in the network. Then only we can, we can, we can say that all the currents can leave from the node. All the currents can leave from the node. So I am marking from this node, V1 node to this side, okay, towards the lesser potential side. If V1 is greater, the other side the current will flow. I1. Don't mark the current here because this point and this point both are same. So I can mark it as I2 and I can mark this as I3 and I can mark this as I4. Okay. Don't try to mark the current here as I2 because this point, this point, we do not have any element. So don't try to because even you write a current also, how do you convert into Ohm's law? Potential difference divided by resistance, but you do not have any resistance in this part. So you cannot write. Okay. So, if I write KCL, I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, I can write I1 is equal to, you see, I1, 
I1 direction and 5 amperes current source direction both are in the same. So I can write it as 5 amperes plus 5. I2, I2 can be taken as potential difference divided by resistance that is V1 minus V3 divided by R1. So V1 is, I, I don't know, V3 but I know that is 0. So V1 minus 0 divided by 2. So simply I am writing it as V1 by 2. Now I3, I am writing it as potential difference divided by resistance. So V1 is here and V2 is here. So potential difference is going to be V1 minus V2 divided by resistance that is 10. Similarly, I4 can be taken as V1 minus V2 divided by 1 is equal to 0. So this is your KCL converted into Ohm's law. Now if you separate V1 terms and V2 terms, you will get it. So it's 1 by 2, 1 by 10, 1. It's 1.5 plus 0 0.1. 1.6 V1. 1.6 V1. And V by 2, 1 by 10, 1.1, 1 1.1. 1 .1. 1.1 V2 and if you send this 5 onto the right side you will get it as minus 5. This is the equation 1 you are going to get. Everybody got everybody got this equation. Hi Abhiram, how are you? After a long time, Abhiram. Everybody got this equation. Similarly, you can write KCL at V2 node. Right. Remember, uh, whenever you are writing some KCL equation or any equation any, at any particular node, that is independent of other, other equations. Okay, not dependent. So you can write, you can still here you can take up I1, I2, I3, I4. Okay. If you are going, if you are getting any confusion, you can mention it with IA, IB, IC and ID. So it will be IA plus IB plus IC plus ID. Why all the currents are leaving from V2 node? Because V2 node should be greater than any other potentials, any other voltages in the network. So that is a point every time you need to remember. So whenever you are writing an equation at any node, that node voltage is greater than any other voltages in the network. Then only currents flows from higher potentials to lower potentials. So IA can be taken as the 6 amperes current source direction is quite opposite to IA. So I can take it as minus 6. IB can be taken as potential difference V2 divided by 4. IC can be taken as V2 minus V1 divided by 10. IB can be taken as V2 minus V1 by 1 is equal to 0. So if you solve this one, uh, you will get this as uh, 1 by 4 is uh, 0.25. It's 0 0.1, 0 0.35 and 1. 1.35 probably. 1.35 V2 and V1 is going to be 1.1 minus 1.1 V1 is equals to 6. So there is a second equation. You solve equation 1 and equation 2. You solve equation 1 and equation 2. So by solving equation 1 and equation 2, you will get V1 value and V2 value. Okay. Now what we want, what we want, we want current flowing through R1, R3 and R2. So we know already what is, uh, you know, what are those currents. Uh, if you want to find out the current flowing through this R1, so what can I write? Current flowing through R1 is going to be potential across that R1, that is V1 minus V3, ground mode. V1 minus 0 divided by 2. So substitute this V1 value here, you will get it. Similarly, current flowing through R2, V1 minus V2 divided by 10 or otherwise V2 minus V1 divided by 10. Anything you can take out. No issues. Okay. Current flowing through R2, V1 minus V2 divided by 10 or V2 minus V2, V1 divided by 10. Anything is okay. Okay. Now current flowing through Current flowing through R3, current flowing through R3, it is going to be V2 divided by 4. So after getting this V1 and V2, V1 and V2 values, you just substitute here, you will get that. Okay. Got it. So this question, this question I have taken, uh, you know, without any 
dependent sources. Only I have taken uh, independent sources and the resistance. This is one model. Here is one model. And remember, whenever the network has only current sources, you can go ahead with the Vipers matrix technique. Okay. So this is going to be one one element. This is going to be one two element. G one one, G one two element. So the diagonal elements are going to be some of the elements, some of the admittances connected to that node. You you sum it one by one, one by two, one by ten. You will get one point six one. One two element is going to be mutual element. Mutual element is going to be negative of the mutual element admittance connected between node one and node. You see. Between node one and node two, ten ohms is connected and one ohm is connected. So one by ten plus one by one, you will get one point one. Okay. When only current sources are there, you can do that. Uh, whatever the form, whatever the technique we use for Weibers formation, uh, Weibers matrix formation, the same here. It is quite valid. Is it clear for everyone? If anybody has doubt, please do let me know. So all those two equations, and you'll get v1 value, v2 value. Substitute those v1, v2 values in this. You'll get that. Right. We'll move on to the next question. See here. Find E naught shown in the figure below. So this network consists current source and voltage source. Previous question I have got only uh, only current source. Now here current source and voltage source. Now here you cannot do, uh, you cannot apply the direct Weibers technique. Some of the elements connected to the node one um, or uh, uh, mutual element connected between the nodes, you cannot do that one. If you want to do that one, the network must be in the current source and resistor format only. If you want to do like that, what you can do is you can convert this uh, voltage source into current source. You go for source transformation. If you do the source transformation, then 30 by 5. 6 so 6 amperes this is positive polarity negative polarity na? so 6 amperes upward direction and 5 ohms resistor it will be like this rest rest of the network is going to be same rest of the network is going to be same okay so without doing that without doing that in another way also we can do see just now I said you should identify the principal nodes. So I have this is one principal node. So let us assi uh, assign it as V1. This is also one more principal node V2. And this is one more principal node V3. Let us take up V3 as equal to 0. Now two principal nodes are there. I want to calculate E0. E0 is nothing but with respect to this ground voltage across two ohms. Voltage across two ohms is E0. That means voltage across 2 ohms is nothing but V2 only. From the ground to that node. So I, I need to calculate only E0. So when your intention is to calculate only V only E0, why do you calculate unnecessarily V1? Why do you calculate unnecessarily V1? Okay. So what we do is what we do is to avoid one node equation or to minimize the number of node equations to minimize to minimize number of node equations what we do is we will go for source transformation so here 10 amperes current source in parallel with 8 ohm resistor that's a current source you can go for source transformation so 10 into 8 it will be 80 volts voltage source in series with 8 ohms of resistance. So by converting this current source into voltage source, one principal node will be minimized. You see now, 8 ohms and 80 volts voltage source. Positive polarity upward, negative polarity downward. And rest as it is. Very good, Dabiram. We have calculated the previous values. Fine. Now the rest of the network will be as usual. This is this is one ohm and five ohms and thirty. And this is the voltage. Oh, sorry, this is the resistance of two ohms. Now I need voltage across these two ohms. That is what 
voltage across two ohms is E naught, which is also equal to V2 with respect to the ground. Now only I have only one principal mode. I have only one principal mode. So source transformation main intention is what? Source transformation main intention are the source transformation helps us to minimize the number of node equations, minimize the number of mesh equations. So whenever the network has many nodes, okay, apply a source transformation. If you if in the network if you have got uh, current sources, apply source transformation. So number of nodes can be minimized and it's easy to solve the network. If number of nodes are more, number of equations will be more. If number of nodes are less, nodes are less, equations also less. Similarly, meshes also. Okay, that is the main intention behind the source transformation technique. Otherwise, what is the requirement of source transformation in the network analysis? Any any technique, any technique we implement in the network analysis is to is to uh, get the solutions very quick. See, we are leaving, we are we, we learned KCL first, then KVL, and then current division rule, voltage division rule. Keeping them aside, we are moving to we will move to node analysis and mesh analysis. Why? There might be some drawback. Uh, due in, in, there might be uh, we, we may not get the solution from the KCL, KVL or current division, voltage division rule. So that's the reason why we have come up with another techniques. Similarly, here also, source transformation is helping us to minimize the number of uh, nodal equations are machine. So, can you tell me what is the answer? <laughs> yeah, Abhiram, you can convert 5 ohms and 30 ohms. That is what I said. If you want to write in terms of uh, Vibus matrix, you can do that. But the thing is, uh, Abhiram, you, but the thing is, you will get two node equations now. So, this side one node equation, and if you uh, if you convert that voltage source, that side also one node equation. <clears throat> so two node equations take some time but here this one it will be only one node equation so you will get less time now the equation will be e naught minus 80 divided by 8 plus e naught minus 30 divided by 5 this is 30 volts voltage source plus e naught by 2 potential difference divided by resistance is equals to 0 so if you solve this one you will get e naught directly answer single step hardly one step one or two steps. Okay. Anybody has doubt? At this at this point, this point I just wanted to tell you one thing. There is a very good book called uh, Introductory. Introductory on circuit analysis or circuit theory. Uh, I, maybe I, I forgot the exact name, but introductory on circuit theory by Boylston. Whatever the other same electronic devices, electronic device and circuits, EDC book is there, na? Same author has written introductory circuit theory. A very good uh, book. So I think uh, the, the PDF is also available in my Telegram channel. If you find it, you please download. Or otherwise, just remind me so that I'll share it with you. Very good book. It's, it has He has started the network theory introduction from the materials. He has taken up a uh, material like a copper and atomic structure. And then he explained the voltage. And then he explained, moved on to current. Then he discussed resistance, Ohm's law, step by step, step by step by. He started from hmm, like uh, standing up line, <laughs> slanting line, lying down line. He started like that. Very good book. So those who want to learn network theory or in, uh, electric circuits, uh, please go through that. Let it be, you know, forget about time. If you really want to learn the subject, this book will definitely help you. Help you. Okay. Uh, especially theoretical concepts are very much clear and application oriented also very clear. Okay, let us let us do this one. 
19.18.35 Shekhar is saying and Abhiram is saying 19.3. Okay, might be. Oh, please check that one. Uh, please be careful with the polarities especially. Now this question you see. Find the power delivered by the dependent source shown in the figure. So far we have solved with the independent sources. Now I have got dependent source. Don't, you know, don't confuse or don't get fear. Okay. Don't get afraid. I'm sorry. Don't get afraid when you look at the independent uh, dependent sources. You just look at the dependent source. Love it. <laughs> like it. Okay. Don't hate it. What it is saying, the dependent source, see, inside the box, current direction is there. So, it is a current source. Besides the box, there is E1. Where is E1? E1 is here. So, E1 is indicating voltage. So, E1 is a voltage. So, if the E1 value is going to change 30 volts, then 30 by 5. If it is 20, 20 by 5. If it is 30, 30 by 5. That means what? So, 20 by 5, 4. 30 by 5, 6. So, if it is 20 volts, the current delivered by this old current source is 4 amperes. If it is 30 volts, the current delivered by this current source is 6 amperes. So, this current source is controlling its value based on the voltage. That's why it is voltage controlled current source. That's why it is voltage controlled current source. That's it. So, you just substitute that parameter. You just substitute that parameter or look at that parameter. I'll, I'll show you some more, one more example also, so that you'll understand how to handle. So, let us substitute this E1 value 20 by 5. So, you'll get it as 4. So, that means what this source is delivering 4 amperes. Okay. Right. What we want? We want power. So, if you want power, we need to calculate voltage across that branch. So, if you are able to calculate voltage across that branch, that voltage into current, that will be the power. Now, how do you calculate that voltage? You can take up, already has given ground. So, you can take up this also ground or you can take up this also ground. Now, from the ground to this point, the voltage is V. Voltage across dependent current source, voltage across two ohms, this two ohms resistance is same because they are connected in parallel. Now, can you tell me what is V? Very good, Shekhar. Can you tell me what is V? V can be, uh, I am not writing KCL and then converting it to Ohm's law. Directly I am writing uh, Ohm's law in the format. Potential difference divided by resistance. So, V minus 20 divided by 2. Potential difference divided by resistance, V by 2. And this side, the current is entering directly, 4 amperes. Current is not leaving, current is entering. So, I can take up it as minus 4. So, if you solve this one, here uh, 20 by 2 and this is 20 by 2 is 10 and 10 and minus 4. So, it will be 14. On the right side, it will be 14. So, V by 2 plus V by 2, it will be 1. So, I am getting V is equal to 14 volts. Now, can you tell me the power delivered by dependent source? Voltage into current. So, 14 into 4. 10 fours of 40, 4 fours of 16. 40 plus 16, 56 watts. That's it. Network is simple, so answer is also simple. So let us let us move on to uh, next question so that you'll understand. Let me take up this current source value as around five amperes. Now see, this network has one uh, one independent current source, one uh, voltage controlled current source, another one is one voltage controlled voltage source. This is voltage controlled voltage source. Because inside the box, we have got plus and minus polarity. So, it's a voltage source. Here, we have got current current direction. So, it's a current source. Now, besides the box, what is the parameter is there? That is what you need to see. So, we have got V. It's a voltage controlled current source. Uh, where is that control parameter? The control parameter is here across the 20 ohms. So, if the voltage across 20 ohms is going to alter, then the current of this source, then the voltage of this source is going to definitely change. It's going to definitely change. So, forget about that. Simply as usual, you identify principal nodes, assign the node voltages, take the reference node. So, I'm this is one principal node. Let me assign this as 0. 
this is one more principal node let me take up this as v1 this is one more principal node let me take up this as v2 okay this current source value as phi n plus you see here see here everybody we are assigning the node voltage always you should assign with respect to ground only so with respect to ground from the ground it is of v1 potential you can move like this or you can move like this also okay you can move like this also you can move like this also any one path so that so if you reach that point that point voltage is with respect to ground it is v1 okay you see from here from this ground to this point the voltage across 20 is vx the voltage across 20 is vx so here i can write vx now vx and this point v1 between these two points there is no element if there is no element there is no voltage drop so i can say v1 is nothing but vx v1 is nothing but vx similarly you check this side from the ground to this point the voltage is v2 from the ground to this point is the voltage is v2 but if you move here but if you move here i have got a only voltage source that is plus 0.25 vx plus 0.25 vx so i can write this point is 0.25 vx i can now say v2 is equal to 0.25 vx because voltage across 8 ohms voltage voltage of 0.25 vx you know that's voltage source both are connected in parallel voltage is same now all the principal node voltages are assigned chalo write case here write case here what i want i want vx i want vx so let us take up i1 don't assign the current here because we do not have any element i1 i2 i3 and i4 so i1 can be taken as minus 5 amperes i2 can be taken as vx by 20 i3 can be taken as vx potential difference divided by resistance vx minus 0.25 vx divided by 10 and i4 can be taken as i4 is a current source directly so i4 is equals to 0.5 vx current is leaving from the node is equal to zero so solve this you will get directly vx value anybody solved very good chandrasekhar anybody solved vx value If, if anybody has doubt in writing this I3, if anybody has doubt in writing I3, let me show you. This is my 10 ohms resistance and this potential is Vx and this potential is here 0.25 Vx. From where? With respect to ground, no? So from the ground to this point, it is of 0.25 Vx voltage. From the ground to this point, it is of Vx. Now the current flowing through this is I3. You just write KVL, you will get it. Plus Vx minus, if the current flows from left to right, positive polarity, negative polarity like this, minus 10 I3 minus 0.25 Vx is equal to 0. I am always considering leaving polarities. I am always considering leaving polarities. I am moving from ground, so plus Vx, leaving polarity minus 10 i3 minus 0.25 vx is equal to 0. So solve this one. So vx minus 0.25 vx is equal to 10 i3 divided by 10 is equal to i3. That is what I have written i3 in place of i3. Whenever you get a doubt in writing potential difference divided by resistance, simply disconnect that branch, indicate the potentials, Indicate the current and write K, you will get it. Is it clear for everyone? So that is of one model. 
with uh, dependent sources. Okay. So let us take up one more model that is on super mode. I I think I solved one question on super node. How to solve the super node with node analysis? You can watch that. It is available in the playlist of playlist of uh, uh, what is it? Trichopedia. Yeah, I think Trichopedia only. Trichopedia playlist is there. I think you can. It is available in that. You can the same example. But let me solve this question with the super node analysis. Okay. So again, here it will be v1. Here it will be v2. And this will be V3. You can assign this V3 as graph. Now I can write this is going to be I1, I2, and I3. So I can write I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to 0. I1 can be taken as V1 minus 10 divided by 4. I2 can be taken as V1 minus 0 divided by 3. And I3 v1 plus 6 plus uh, v1 plus 6 minus v2 divided by resistance you cannot write resistance is not there so you cannot write resistance so what i am doing is i am just keeping i3 as it is this is the equation okay now i just wanted to write one more node equation on this side that is v2 a v2 node so let me write this as i a I B I C. So I A plus I B plus I C is equal to zero. I A we cannot write V two minus six minus V one divided by resistance. Resistance is not there. You cannot write. So I am writing I A as it is. I B V two divided by two and I C V two minus twenty divided by six is equal to zero. So here. Uh, in this network, in this network, in this equation, V1 is unknown, I3 is unknown. In this equation, V2 is unknown, IA is unknown. Okay. So, you cannot solve this equation and this equation. Okay. Until unless you can, until unless you can relate that uh, equation 1 and equation 2, you cannot solve that. Okay. So, what we do is, what we do is, what is IA? IA is nothing but quite opposite to I3, na? IA is nothing but quite opposite to I3. So, IA I can write it as minus I3. So, what I am doing is, what I am doing is, what I am doing is, if IA is equals to minus of v, V2 by 2 plus V2 minus 20 by 6, if this is the value, <coughs> what I am going to do is, or I can write I3 is equals to minus IA. Na? I3 is equal to minus IA or IA is equal to minus IA. Anything is okay. I just wanted to uh, substitute this equation here, this IA term here. What can I write in place of I3? I can I can write in place of I3, I can write minus IA. I have got IA value. So minus of IA, you will get it as V1 minus 10 by 4 plus V1 by 3. Uh, minus of minus, it will be plus. So plus V2 by 2 plus V2 minus 20 by 6 is equal to 0. This is the combined nodal equation. That is what we used to say. By shorting the by shorting the voltage source, we will write the equation. It is not like shorting the voltage source. <laughs> it is not like shorting the voltage source. We cannot do that in practice. You cannot do that uh, in practice. What? It's just an assumption. We don't. We never short. It's just an assumption that the V1 node, V2 node, just yeah combining it and writing it. We should not combine action. We should not at all combine. So it will be like this. A resistor, a resistor and here this potential separate, here this potential separate. This voltage source and this voltage source. Ten twenty. Four three two six. Four three two six. So it simply uh, just remove the. It is just an imagination. You just remove the voltage source and write the nodal equation combinedly. That's it. As it is, how you write individually for the <clears throat> how you have wrote uh, have you have, how you have wrote the nodal equations 
previously in the same way you have to write. So v1 minus 10 divided by 4, v1 divided by 3, v2 divided by 2, v2 minus 20 divided by 6 is equal to 0. This is what the equation we have got. Okay. Got it? If anybody has doubt, you can ask me. After writing this, after getting this equation, this is equation 1. And the second one is going to be, you should write KVL at super mode. So if you write KVL, you will get it as plus V1 plus V uh, plus 6 minus V2 is equal to 0. So that means V1. So if you solve this one, you will get some V1 term plus V2 term is equal to some constant if you have 10 by 4 and 20 by 6. Na? So 10 by 4 plus 20 by 6. Of course, here if you want uh, 1 by 4, 1 by 3. And here uh, 1 by 2 plus 1 by 6. So this is one equation and here v1 minus v2 is equal to minus 6. This is second equation. So solve this equation 1 and equation 2, you will get v1 value and v2 value. It's a lengthy procedure, obviously it's a lengthy procedure. So instead of applying super mode analysis, you can go for node analysis only. The only thing is, don't assume the ground here. You assume the ground at this point or at this point. You will get it. Or you can even apply mesh analysis also. You can even apply mesh analysis also. If you fail to write KCL in terms of Ohm's law, you can write KVL, no? If you fail to write KCL in terms of Ohm's law, write KVL. If you fail to write KVL in terms of Ohm's law, write KCL. If you fail both the cases, then super node is up. Then, super, you, then you should implement super node. That kind of situation will never happen in gate. It may happen in engineering service examination. Conventional paper, it can you can get that kind of questions. But not in gate. Okay. Right. So that's it. Uh, today's session. So these are the models like you will be having independent sources plus resistors, dependent sources plus resistors, and then super mode. There can be one more question also. The resistors and independent sources. Resistors plus, sorry, resistors plus dependent sources. It is not at all a network. This will solve, this will, these kind of network will perform some work. This will never perform a work. No work with this one. If the network consists resistors and dependent sources, like this, let me show you. Like this. All dependent sources and resistors. Okay. So this is maybe if I write it as 2 times I1, if the current is flowing here. Maybe it is writing it as 2 times V1 if the voltage is here, V1. Okay. 5 times I1. So each and every source is depending upon other branch current or other branch voltage. But how do you get the voltage drop here? How do you get the current here? How do you get the voltage here? Is a question. Until unless you have an independent source, the network is not at all a live network or healthy network or energized network. This is a dead network. Even you touch also, you will not get shock. But this one, if you touch this one, you will get shock, definitely. Because you have independent sources. Now, so resistance plus dependent sources. If the network has only dependent sources, that is equivalent to a dead circuit. Simply an opposing element, that's it. Same like a resistor. Okay. Yeah, all passive elements. You can say, but um, <laughs> yeah, passive elements, that's fine. 
but don't say it as positive temperature coefficient elements so dependent sources can result in negative resistance also like uh, semiconducting devices so dependent sources are nothing but semiconducting devices it can be positive also but semiconducting devices transistor diode fet uh, this kind of things ankit uh, no i am not from iit i am from jt hyderabad Two thousand nine. I'm sorry, just a minute. Okay. So that's it for the today. If you have any questions, you can ask me or you can write on my mail ID. Thank you. Yes, there is JNTU Kakinad also. JNTU Hyderabad, I said no. No, Ankita asked something, uh, are you, you are my senior in IIT, Roche. I am not from IIT, <laughs> so definitely I am not going to be a senior. Maybe another Navi, same, his name also Navi. Ankita, are you there? Chalo, same, then, uh, we'll... We'll see you tomorrow with another session. Okay. If you have any doubts, you can comment, you can ask me. Otherwise, fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.